Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this uh, video, we're going to be talking about the Weissman 5172 electric roll-up door in HO scale. Weissman is uh, not a company that a lot of American modelers have probably heard of. Um, they were founded in, in 1988 in Germany. Uh, they took advantage early on of the, um, the Berlin Wall falling and started producing uh, their products in Hungary in 1993. Um, they're fairly large and um, um, in the recent years, they've actually taken over Kibri. They bought Kibri in 2009, uh, which had gone bankrupt, which most American modelers should be familiar with Kibri. And, and then in 2014, they, they took over Volmer, which again, most American modelers should, should know those model, those names. Weissman's fairly famous for uh, electronics, like signaling systems. They have a line of, a uh, beautiful line of uh, car, automated cars that will run in um, plaster roads. Uh, you bury a wire in the plaster, kind of like the Fowler system, but um, I think better. Um, the cars are very automated and smart. Uh, and, you know, great details, although European prototypes. Uh, they were semi-famous for producing a number of animated HO figures, which they still do. Um, one of the, a few of the animated HO figures that they produced were, were naked people having sex. So um, they're very rare and hard to find, although, they, again, they still produce even those figures if you're really interested in putting some of them in your HO buildings. Um, the uh, they make a some uh, track um, track equipment maintenance away equipment uh, beautiful stuff uh, uh, track uh, uh, ballast hampers things like that uh, so I think, believe they're automated uh, lighting DCC uh, very expensive I think like six or seven hundred euros for their their ballast hampers so nice nice equipment nice manufacturer. Again, everything's kind of automated, um, and that's why we're talking about these doors. So these doors are featured on our Freemo module, uh, Chi Stake 2, uh, and we put them in a, a, a corrugated uh, warehouse, uh, corrugated paper warehouse um, that uh, is on the layout. It's unfinished. Uh, I'll probably talk about the building at some point down the road, but today we're talking about the doors because we get a lot of questions about them. Um, you can see um, switching out one of them and uh, right now. So I came across these, this product in a hobby store in Easton, Pennsylvania called Trains and Lanes. Um, it was just on the shelf. It kind of piqued my curiosity. I had not heard of the company or the product before. And I bought one and uh, thought it might be an interesting thing to put in our, our warehouse. And you can see in this video, it's basically taped inside and I'm just kind of testing it out. It's a DCC and DC product. Okay, so um, here you can see what you get in the box. You get the roll-up door. You get, um, it's kind of almost like a decoder uh, that works, again, with DC or DCC. And you get like a frame for the door. The frame is actually designed to fit in a specific or one or two maybe specific Kibri models um, and to use as doors. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be used for rail cars or they're supposed to be used for vehicle doors, but in this, the, for our purposes, we're going to modify this thing to make it work. And we also need to modify it to make it work for plate F uh, cars. So when I bought it, I wasn't sure that was going to be possible. So, um, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was going to be possible um, to use for that purpose, but um, you can see the, uh, this is the decoder um, electronics device. There's four wires that come out of it, two wires that go to the door. The four wires can be configured to use it as a, under DC power, or um, you can connect them directly to track uh, the main bus and use it as like an accessory decoder, more or less. So you can see, to, to figure this thing out, I kind of roughly assembled it uh, and kind of taped it up inside the building. And my main concern was the length of the doors, if the doors would go longer than their frames, because that was going to be important to get for down to the 
17 feet clearance I needed for the plate F stuff. So here um, I got it all kind of just alligator clipped together and taped in and I'm, I'm testing it out, seeing how it works and checking to see when it comes down if I can go past the frame. Um, so here we go and awesome, we got enough space. So the doors are actually pretty simple in their design. The, uh, the plastic pieces are actually just secured to a piece of like flexible acetate and that's how they they move. There's no real hinges or anything like that. On the left there you can see the motor um, which goes inside the tube at the top and mates with the door and then the, um, the decoder uh, on the uh, just above that. Now they don't, oh, there's also a weight at the bottom you can see. So there's the, uh, the roll at the top that the motor sticks into. Um, you can see it there. None of the parts actually like are mechanically fastened or glued. Everything stays loose. So if something got jammed ever, um, you could take it apart. It's a little fussy putting it together. Um, you have to be careful. There's the motor with the gear on the end of it just sticks in there and mates with a, um, a kind of a gear on the inside. Um, there's with the controller. Um, you can see that plastic acetate on the back and windows, which are pretty cool. Now these things are the, uh, this is the key for us extending it to accommodate American sized freight cars, especially modern plate F stuff, is that they give you, uh, because it's designed for a Kibri kits um, to, to fit in them, there's two different colors of door frames. So, Having that second door frame is really important because it's a very kind of proprietary track kind of shape that would be hard to recreate. So you can see there, I kind of chop one arm off off uh, just one side of one, the red frame. Um, the doors were already in the blue frame and I'm painting them so I didn't really care. And I take that piece and I chop enough to give me that extension that I need for the door. And, um, basically glue it onto the bottom and it's as simple as just sticking it on you do have to make take a nice little file and make sure that track is clean and there's not going to get hung up on the track but otherwise it's it's a pretty easy process to to extend these things and once it's all painted uh gray i think i painted them it you know you can't even tell that it wasn't that way from the start so put it in the building, it's a paper building, so it's cardboard, but I was able to kind of use these plastic strips and create like a channel that it drops in. And then there's actually not shown here, but I did end up putting screws through these plastic strips. So it's removable in the future. And I routed the wire to the, the controller up or the DCC thing up on the, uh, the roof of the structure on the inside, just tucked it up in the trusses there. I'm not sure why I cut open trusses so that you can't see any of them. And then we're going with DC power. So we made up a control panel on the laser and uh, use some lighted switches, kind of make it fancy. It's going to be used at Fremo um, setup. So we needed something that we could unplug. Uh, I think we put some kind of computer plug on there, uh, you know, multi-conductor. There's the, uh, that's the lit buttons. We, we buy a lot of stuff from Adafruit Industries, um, great supplier of electronics, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, uh, whatever you need. Um, so here's the finished, uh, the finished thing. And it's, with the box itself is 3D printed. You can kind of see a little of that. There's a wing on the box that we can clamp onto the leg of a Fremo module. I think we, we actually screw it on. And again, it's a, there's a modular multi-conductor plug uh, to connect these things. I think it's some sort of, um, some sort of computer serial or something that, you know, I don't even remember, RS-232, something like that. The lights just look cool. That's why we used them. And it works great. It's not, they're not cheap. They're, I, I paid about 60 something dollars for them. Um, uh, but their list price is like 80 or 90. Uh, it comes with a little template for the door to help you cut your opening in a building that you were going to put them in, which is nice to, to have. Um, and now this, this is a schematic for the wiring. So again, there's four wires and uh, you basically need two of the wires, um, the red and the green, you just have momentary contact with. That's why those are momentary push buttons. 
and they trigger the door up or down. Um, you don't need to have a, a toggle or anything like that. It's just a, an impulse and it triggers and the door will go up and down automatically through the entire cycle. Although you could stop it if you press the, the down button, it would change direction. Um, it's pretty reliable. I was, I was fairly impressed. I'm not even sure how it's as reliable as it is. Um, it seems to be kind of bulletproof the way they made it. Um, we've not had to take them out or service them or do anything to them. Um, we had a power issue at one Freemo setup, but that was not the door's fault. That was somebody plugged the accessory bus into the track bus. So, and they didn't work uh, because they were getting DCC signals and they thought they were on DCC. Uh, so for DCC, you just actually have to connect two of the wires together um, and to connect to the, tr the, the main DCC bus. Simple as that. Great product. Um, probably will explore some other products that this company makes over the, in the future. They make a lot of neat stuff. Again, those animated figures, um, animated, all kinds of stuff, fountains, things like that. Um, you can see the wires had the resistors already soldered in. Um, you know, they were color coded. Um, can't say en enough uh, good things about this product, even though it's expensive, but everything in, in HO scale is expensive. <laughs> So I'll leave you with just the, the building at a Fremo show. You can see the both doors working at the same time. And um, thanks for watching my video. And uh, um, we'll probably have more like this if people like these specific things. A lot of people ask about these doors, so that's why I made this video. Take care. Thank you.